Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nick. This week I had a special request from somebody that's near and dear to my heart, my mother. She wanted something to put above her mantle so that it didn't look so, well, so plain. It's a larger area being they have vaulted ceilings and sometimes it's a little bit hard to find things that'll fit that space just right and, well, the bigger pieces of artwork, they can get pretty pricey. So I figured I would make a canvas, stretch it, and paint her a painting. If you guys want to see how I did it, stick around. I started by cutting a 2x4 that was 8 feet long and half at the miter saw. Then I took the 2x4 pieces over to the table saw so I could just rip off the rounded over portion of the 2x4s. Then I could proceed to rip each of the two pieces into halves, making four pieces total. I lowered my table saw blade slightly and moved my fence in so that the thickness of the blade was going to be taken away, leaving a very small lip or bead detail. Then using a quarter inch roundover bit in my trim router, I could knock off some of the major corners and some hand sanding and I ended up with a profile that looked like this. The idea here is the two lower corners are the ones that I rounded over. That particular bead detail or lip holds the canvas off of the frame so that you don't see the frame underneath. There are many ways to make a stretch canvas frame. This is just the profile that I prefer. Then I took some other scrap pieces of 2x4 and mitered them at 45 degrees to act as corner braces. Then I cut the frame pieces to 45 degrees as well. Using a speed square clamped to keep my joint 90 degrees, I added a little bit of glue to the joint and then I add a screw from either direction. I make sure to stagger the screws so they don't run into one another. Here you can see me using a clamp to install the corner braces and then I just toe screwed them in place. I lay out my canvas on my kitchen table and then put my frame on it upside down and start stapling. I center the frame in the canvas and then I put a couple staples where I wanted to start. Then I move to its adjacent side, stretch the canvas tightly and add a couple staples. Then I rotate the frame 90 degrees and repeat. I work my way out. Every time I pull, I'm removing a wrinkle and then adding a wrinkle in the other direction. I just work myself closer and closer to the corners. Making sure to pull the canvas nice and tight, I have all the wrinkles removed. I also like to come back with a tack hammer and make sure all the staples are nice and flush. Coming to the corners can be pretty tricky and there's a couple different ways in which you can do the corners. Some people prefer hospital corners or different methods or mitered corners. This method, I don't even know if it's a real method, but I've just kind of used it over the years. This just happens to be the method that I prefer. It's sometimes hard to explain how this corner goes together. Just remember it's not a race, just to kind of play around with where the fabric lies and whatnot. Make sure to keep it nice and tight and then staple it off. Is this the professional method that artists use? I have no idea. It's just the way that works for me. Once you get that done, then you can cut away the excess canvas. Sometimes I toss in an extra staple or two to make sure everything stays in place. Then I flip the canvas over and you can tell that it is tight. It's almost as tight as a drum. I like to use a product called Gesso to kind of prime the canvas. Before I've used regular paint and that does just fine, but I like how the Gesso feels when you actually go to paint the painting. A lot of times too, after the gesso, I will paint a, another base coat of either white or an off-white, but in this case, I just kept going. I began by using some frog tape to just tape off random size squares. It doesn't necessarily matter where you place them or how big they are, it's kind of supposed to be random. I like frog tape because it keeps a nice clean edge. Then it was just a matter of repeating square after square after square. If you want an idea of what kind of paint colors to go with, a lot of times you can go to your home centers and in the paint department they'll have swatches of complementing paint colors. There's also a product called Matte Medium which is 
matte in finish as far as sheen, but the medium means it's just almost like a clear paint. A lot of times you can add matte medium to paint to where you get these overlapping, somewhat transparent squares. Some of the colors I blended together, some of the colors I left solid. Like I said before, it's kind of all about being random. There's no real rhyme or reason to any of it, and you just keep adding squares. My kids got to help out as well, and that's a perfect project to get the youngsters involved. And of course it wouldn't be complete unless I added a little bit of flat black paint to the edges. This just kind of gives it a little bit of a frame and separates the canvas from the wall. So what do you guys think? It's another one in the books for me. I mean, you know, art is very subjective. I more or less wanted to show that, you know, a couple two by fours and some canvas, a little bit of paint. You got yourself a, a statement piece for a room. So, you know, maybe squares aren't your thing. Maybe you um, like triangles or circles. Maybe geometry is not your thing. You could do like mathematical equations. You could do some algebra in there. All right, well, that's all I got for you for this time. You guys, take care. Yes, I see it. It's, it's a bunch of rectangles. Yes, yes, rectangles.